to Ophia's Open Class. My name is Andrea Hazelay and I'm an Ophia Ambassador and I'd like to welcome my assistant, Phoebe. Thank you. So before we get started, I'd like to go over today's safety requirements. Number one, make sure the space where today's movement is to take place is large enough for the number of learners. So if there's one learner, you don't need a lot of space. However, if there are more than one learner, make sure the space is a little bit larger. Step two, make sure the space where today's movement is to take place is free of obstacles. If you have furniture, small toys on the ground, make sure you move it to the side. Step three, make sure the surface where today's movement is to take place is non-slip. So in our home, we like to do this bare feet. So take your socks off. If you're gonna take this game outside, make sure you're wearing your running shoes. So, this lesson is the introduction to net and wall games. Net and wall games are games in which the learner propels an object into a space, trying to make it difficult for an opponent to return. I'll give you some clues. Here are some sports that are categorized in net and wall games. Tennis, badminton, squash, in this unit, we will teach net and wall games through games by breaking it into its simplest format. So today is just an introduction lesson. Then throughout the week, the games will get a little bit more complex. Let's get started. The learning goal for today's lesson is we are learning how to control an object safely with an implement for fun and for success. Here's the primary game. Primary learners, this game is adapted from our Ophia Play Sport resource and it's called Keep It Up. The primary focus is sending and receiving an object safely with an implement. Here's the equipment you will need. We're gonna categorize our equipment as easy, moderate, and difficult. Our easy equipment is a bean bag or a stuffed toy, our moderate equipment is a balloon. If you don't have a balloon, find a Ziploc bag and fill it with air. Floats. And our difficult equipment is something that bounces, a ball. Then you're gonna look around your home for some material to create a large play area. So what I like to use in our home is rolled up towels, or you can use tape, string, and if you're gonna take it outside, See if you can have some sidewalk chalk. Here's how you set up the game. You're gonna create this large playing area using whatever material you have. As you can see behind me, we used up our rolled up towels. Here's how you play alone. We're gonna start off by using our hand, okay? So open up your hand, wave it at me, make sure it's nice and flat. And we're gonna start off by choosing an object that is categorized as easy. So. Petey, would you like to use Mr. Bear or the bean bag? Bean bag. Okay, before we get started, let's explain the game. You're going to try to keep this object up for five consecutive times. You're going to keep your object, your hand open, and instead of catching, you're just going to have toss the object as high as your head and have it land in your hand. Okay? Five consecutive times. Go ahead. Ready? One, two, three. Four, five, thank you. Here's your look fours. I can look at the object. I can be in a ready position. I can send the object with a controlled force, so not too hard or not too soft. And I can move where the object is going. This is gonna get harder when you move to the piece of object that you have in your home that's categorized as moderate. So, Petey's gonna demonstrate. You want to use the bag filled with air or the balloon? Okay, so same thing. He's going to keep this object in the air five consecutive times using his open hand as high as his head. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, he's going to move to his difficult equipment. This time with the ball, he's going to be able to let it bounce once before he hits it again. Okay, go ahead. Ready? One, as high as his head. Two, three, four, 
Bye. As you can see, when he moves to his more difficult piece of equipment, he has to get ready to move into different directions and also be able to move his hand to where the object goes. Okay? Here's how you play with another learner. I'm going to take this game to another level by adding an implement. An implement is an object that you use to strike the sending object. So you can use a paddle or you can use a paper plate as your implement. So which one would you like to use? Paddle. And I'll use the paper plate. And which object would you want to send and receive? Bear, balloon, or ball? Balloon. Okay, here we go. We're going to go into our playing area. We're going to get into our writing position. Let's show them our writing position. Ready? Five consecutive times. One, oops. One, two, three, four, five. We did it. So, same thing. I can look at the object. I can be in my ready position. I can send the object with a controlled force. Not too hard, not too light and I can move where the object is going. Here are some extensions that you can try for this game. Increase or decrease the size of the playing area. Try changing up the object. Or even changing the implement you're using to strike the object. You can even try using your non-dominant hand. So if you're using your right hand all the time, see if the game changes if you put it, the implement in your left hand. Another thing that you can do to take this game to another level is play against a wall. So instead of playing in an open area, I'll show you right over here. I found a small little space in the wall. Now I'm going to send the object to the wall, let it bounce, and then I'll return it. So one, two, three, four, five. Try it out and enjoy the game. Here's the game for our junior learners. It is adapted from Ophia's play sport resource and it's called One Bounce. The focus of the game is sending and receiving an object with an implement to create a rally. Here's the equipment you will need. You're going to look for three objects around your home and we're going to categorize it as easy, moderate, and difficult. My easy object is something that floats. We can use a balloon or a bag with hair in it. My moderate is a larger size ball. And my difficult object is a smaller ball. Then you're going to look around your home for some material to create the playing area. What I've done is I've used rolled up towels. You can use tape or if you're going to take this game outside by using chalk on the ground. Here's how you set it up. You're going to take your material to create a line in the middle of the playing area and that's going to be my net. Then I've used some other roll of towels, my white ones, to create the borderline. Here's how you play this game alone. I'm going to start off with my easy object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off on one side of the play here. The goal is to send the object over the blue line, and I'm going to run to the other side to catch it. It's easy as this. Other side, catch. Other side, and catch. This is easy. Try doing it with a one touch. So I'm going to take out the catch and I'm going to try with a one touch. So I'm going to hit it over the line, come to the other side, other side, hit it. Here we go. Because this is easy for me, I'm going to move to my moderate object. And this is going to be my larger ball. And here's where the game of one bounce comes in. I'm going to send the ball over the middle line. And then I'm going to let it bounce once, and then I'm going to receive it, okay? So watch. Over, bounce, catch. Over, bounce, catch. Over, bounce, catch. The catch is easy. Try doing it with a one touch, okay? So this is where your movement has to move, get a bit faster. So one touch, other side. One touch, other side. One touch. Oh, I missed that, okay? If you want to take this to another level, try using your object that is categorized as difficult. Here are your look fors for this game. I can look at the object. I can be 
in my ready position, ready to move wherever the object goes. I can send the object with a controlled force, not too hard, not too light. And then, the last one, I can move to where the object is going. Okay? So, I'm going to demonstrate the next layer of the game by using an implement. So, my implement here can be a paper plate or a paddle. Edie, are you ready to play? Yeah. Do you want to use the easy, moderate, or difficult object? Which one? Easy. Easy. Okay, so let's start off with the balloon. Which implement do you want to use? Paddle. He's going to stand on one side of the play area. I'm going to stand on the other side. So remember, the focus of this game is to create a rally. And a rally means that we're going to try to keep the object going over the net without it stopping. Okay? Ready? Over. One touch. Whoop. Okay? Okay? Stay on your feet. In my ready position. Good job. Oh, here we go. If it goes out of bounds, we'll try again. Awesome. Now, we're going to show you how to play this game with the moderate object. So this is the object that's a little bit harder. And again, this is where the game of one bounce comes in. It's going to go one bounce, and then we're going to strike the object over the net. You ready? Okay. So one bounce, over. Well, that was my call. Let's try again. One bounce, over. Go. One bounce over. There we go. One more hit. Good job. Okay, so there are many ways to take this game to another level. Here are some extensions. Increase or decrease the size of the playing area. Change the object you're using to send over the line. You can even try changing the implement. Try using your non-dominant hand. If you're used to using your right, use your left. And then, for another extension, you can actually change the line and make it into a net. So, raising that line a bit. We're going to show you some extensions right now. Here's the equipment you will need. You're going to look around your home for three objects and we're going to categorize it as easy, moderate, and difficult. My easy object is something that floats, a bag filled with air or a balloon will do, a larger ball, and a smaller ball. Then you're going to look around your home to find an implement to use to send the object. Paper plate, a paddle, or a racket. Then you're going to look around for some material to create the playing area. So, as you can see in my setup, I've used rolled up towels, string, tape, or if you're going to take this game outside, sidewalk chalk will do too. I created a line that divides the playing area. So that's like my net, that's my blue towel. And I use other towels to create the border line of the playing area. To play this game alone, I'm going to start off by using my easy object. And in order for us to demonstrate control with object placement, I want you to try following a specific pattern. Here's your first pattern. You're going to send the object two times close to the net, and then two times further away from the net. So check it out. Here's my net, and here's how you play alone. Two times close to the net, so over, other side, catch, over, other side, catch. further away from the net. So my object placement is now going to be to the back side of the other side of the net. So over, side catch, over, other side catch, over, other side catch. You want to make it challenging? 
try doing it one touch. So no catch. Other side. Other side. Oh, there you go. As you can see, it's getting more challenging when I take out the catch. When you're ready, try moving to your moderate object. And if you're successful with that, move to your difficult. Here are your look fors for the game. I can look at the object. I can be in my ready position. I can send the object with a controlled force. So if I'm going to make sure it's close to the net, not too hard. But if I want the object to go to the back side of the court, okay, I'm going to hit a little bit harder. I can move to where the object is going. And knowing my ability, I can set a realistic goal. So that's really important. If I know that I'm not really having success with this ball, I'm going to move to my easier object. Okay? So we're going to take this game to another level and we're going to show you how to play with another learner. So Petey and I are going to demonstrate with our open hand first. And same thing, we're going to start off with our easy object. And we're going to try two times close to the net, two times to the back side of the court. Okay? So we're going to stand right up close to the net. We're in our ready position. Okay? Ready? One. Two, three, four. I'm going to take it to the back side. One, two, three, four. Back to the close to the net. One, two, three, four. And then back side. One, two, three, four. As you can see, we're now focusing more on object placement on the court. Okay? We're going to try using an implement, which is now our paddle or a paper plate. We're going to try our moderate object, which is the bouncy ball. Okay? So here's how we do it. He's going to take his paddle. Okay? Two times close, two times further away. We'll try our best. Okay? So ready. One bounce. One bounce. One bounce. One bounce. One bounce. We're going to take it to the further side of the court. One bounce. One bounce, one bounce, one bounce. Back to the, close to the net. One bounce, one bounce, one bounce, one bounce. To the back side, one bounce, one bounce. Awesome work, high five. Okay, here are some extensions to the game. Increase or decrease the size of the play area. Try experimenting by changing the object or the implement. Try using your non-dominant hands. If you're used to using your right, try your left. You can even try changing the line, the net. Create the line higher or lower, okay? And here's an extension I'm gonna show you right now. Try playing against the wall. So same thing, I'm sending and receiving an object with an implement, here's my implement, but I also wanna make sure that I demonstrate control with object placement, okay? So, I'm going to move this line out of the way. I'm going to use my wall right in front of me. I'm going to try sending it close to the wall. I'm going to move further back. One bounce. One, two, three, four. I'm going to move further back. One, two, three, four. Okay? You can even try placing targets on the wall. So you really have to be intentional on where you send the object. Try it. Here are some accommodations and modifications for today's lesson. For accommodations, you are adding supports to the game to help the learner be successful. For example, increasing or decreasing the size of the playing area, experimenting with different objects you are sending from objects that don't bounce to objects that do bounce. You can also try changing the implement you are using to send the object. So in today's lesson, I've used paddle, uh, paper plate. And try looking around in your home for a racket. But remember, the longer the handle, the harder it is to send the object. The shorter the handle, the easier it is to send the object. Modifications are changing the expectation to the game or lowering the number of expectations in the game. So if the learner has challenges sending or receiving objects, consider the following modifications. Instead of sending the object, 
Try teaching the learner how to hold the paddle. The expectation would be to hold the paddle while walking to designated spots in the playing area. You can even teach the learner how to balance an object while walking to designated spots in the playing area, even changing that object to something that's harder to balance. Another modification is teaching the learner how to hold the object and then transferring that object into their partner's paddle. It's really important that you understand your learner's abilities in order to figure out what accommodations they need and or modifications they need in order to be successful in the game. Try it out. Here are your guiding questions for today's lesson. Number one, describe how you position your body when sending an object with an implement over a line or net. Number two, Describe how you can send the object to help your partner receive it successfully. Number three, how do you position your body to receive an object from over a line or net with or without an implement? Number four, describe how using the strategy of making predictions can help you be successful in this week's games. Number five, think about what you were successful at in the game. Describe what you think made it successful for you. Number six, were there parts of the game where you experienced stress? There are a lot of things to think about at once. Did you ever feel rushed? Is it difficult to focus your attention on many things at one time? Was it ever frustrating for you? What can you do when you are having these feelings? Don't forget that when you're trying these games, you're going to need to try your best. It's not going to be perfect the first time, but that's okay. We're excited to share these games with you. Don't forget to share your journey at hashtag OfiaOpenClass. Thank you.